Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, good to see you all. How you doing, Manny? I'm doing wonderfully. Thank you for having me back on Celebrating Act 2. Love it. Manny Pacheco, my favorite Hollywood historian. I was watching um, a movie the other night on uh, cable. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the movie, but it's a famous movie. And in the background, oh, I, I hate myself for not writing down the name of the actor, but in the background was, um, uh, uh, he's the, the heavy in the film. He's, he was a gangster sidekick. Right. And um, he then later went on to become um, a regular, uh, a, a kind of a leading actor. And, and it's Raymond Burr. Mm. Right. Oh yeah, Raymond, Raymond Burr, Burr was a yeah he was a heavy in a lot of films. Absolutely. Who was a he was a big guy, naturally big guy. But years later, of course, he he if you want to call it graduated, I don't think it's a step up necessarily. But he graduated to more leading roles. Well, yeah, when you end up being the star on Perry Mason, that, 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 that kind of changes everything. I mean, you might be thinking yeah. of the movie Rear Window. He played a bad guy in the movie Rear Window, but there's others. Uh, yeah. uh, just for the audience's um, edification, uh, a heavy in in Hollywood parlance means that you're a bad guy. It doesn't mean any. It has nothing to do with weight or girth or anything right. like that. It just Correct. means that you're just a bad guy, a very bad person. Yeah. Right. And there are layers of bad in Hollywood. But if you're the heavy, you are the main bad guy. Right. <laughs> you're the baddest of the bad guy. You're a gangster. You're a, a That's main right. mother. So, so if yeah. you take a movie like Little Caesar or uh, uh, maybe Public Enemy or Angels with Dirty Faces, of mm -hmm. course, James Cagney plays uh, a gangster, but somehow you kind of love him. So they had to put in somebody who was a little bit more evil and enter Humphrey Bogart, who spent the better part of the 1930s as a heavy until he became a leading man in movies like The Maltese Falcon and Casablanca. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the heavy is the baddest of the bad. Right, and also uh, for a little equal opportunity here, well, most of the heavies were villains. There were a few like uh, uh, Betty Davis, who the villainous, who was a heavy. Yes, yes, and but they weren't necessarily called heavies. They might have been called something like Black Widows. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, there might have been a different name for them, but yes, technically they were heavies as well. And Betty Davis was, and Joan Crawford, really wonderful mm -hmm. at playing villainesses when they when they were asked to but some of the uh, some of the character actors who remain character actors and and were very popular as heavies uh be mainly because of the popularity of film noir and the gangster films and even westerns i mean westerns would provide your 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 source of heavies in westerns you might find a lee van cleef who spent yes. a lot of his career as as a heavy and he was so good at playing just these evil weasel like victims you know he got that narrow nose and that narrow face yeah. so he kind of you know he kind of symbolized that that kind of uh, evilness but there were intelligent heavies like Arthur Kennedy in the James Stewart Anthony Mann productions also Dan Duryea was good at playing a heavy and of course Jack Elam before he became known as a pretty much a comedian in westerns he played heavies in the 1950s as well so um, Westerns were a good place to find them, but then you had your source for, for gangster films and film noir where you'd find these wonderful actors who became famous because of it. Uh, Clifton Webb, who ended up playing Mr. Belvedere, but he was a heavy in Laura, the movie Laura, and The Dark Corner. He plays a bad guy. William Bendix, before the life of Riley, was great at playing the heavy, playing just an yes. evil, evil guy. Yeah. So and everybody knows William Bendix if you if you ever watched the TV version of the, the Life of Riley. So I mean, there, there's a great great example. But then there's names that might not be as familiar, like Neville Brand. Neville, if you want to see a great film noir featuring people like Lee Van Cleef and Jack Elam, the third part of the heavy group was a, a gentleman named Neville Brand, and he he looked a little younger, he looked a little bit more innocent. But don't let don't let his innocent look belie his evilness. And 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 he learned it, believe it or not, by by being a member of the military before he went into acting. So he, there was a tough side to a very innocent looking face. And Neville Brand is one of those forgotten uh, uh, heavies. 
And I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention one of the great heavies of all time that probably would have had a longer career had he not died suddenly at the tender age of 32, and that was Laird Kreger. Laird Kreger was a fine for 20th Century Fox, and he appeared in a in a movie called I Wake Up Screaming with um, with uh, Victor Mature and Betty Grable, and of course he plays a, a corrupt police officer who has a who pines for the sister of Betty Grable. Uh, played by Carol Landis, by the way, and she ends up dead. And so, of course, they're trying to find the murderer. And 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 I'm telling you, this man, uh, Laird Kreger, was so creepy in this film. And, and they started making other films like an updated version of The Lodger. He was in a, a film called Hangover Square. But he wanted to be a good guy so badly that he went on this weight program because he was overweight. And he lost like about 150 pounds over the course of six weeks. And his heart just couldn't take it. And, and he oh, ended up sure. dying at the age of 32, right when he was cast as the inspector in, Le, in the 1940s version of La Miserable. And so he would have been great, because I think that would have been his breakout role. That would have been his role, like the Maltese Falcon was, to uh, Humphrey Bogart. And I think there was an A-list star waiting to be found. Unfortunately, we'll never see that, because Laird Kreger died so young. Also, there was a, like uh, Ed, Edward G. Robinson and Broderick Crawford uh, for most of their early uh, careers. Certainly, in the movies, were were heavies, were bad guys. Well, Broderick, Broderick Crawford for sure. I mean, mm. Broderick Crawford could just play a real snake when he wanted to, and he was and he was loud and he was tough and he knew how to bat people around. I mean, he would just push them around. And he didn't care if they were female or male. I mean, he had real heavy. Edward G. Robinson, I think, falls under the category of James Cagney. He would play the bad guy, but since he was the star, they needed to find somebody just a little bit worse <laughs> than him. Yeah, and so they would bring in somebody like Bogey. You know, and then he, George Raft, the same thing. I mean, he would play mm -hmm. the bad guy, but not as bad as Bogey right. would play it. And so they'd always bring in Bogey for time. Sometimes they would bring in John Garfield. They would find somebody to play the really bad, bad guy. And and then, of course, uh, at the end, it didn't matter. Uh, uh, Cagney, Robinson, Rap, they'd all die anyway. But they would die trying to do something heroic, maybe killing off the heavy. Th th that's just the way it worked. Yeah. Um and you know a lot of a lot of uh, good guys love to play against type. You know the hero in King Kong, Bruce Cabot, was wonderful in westerns playing bad guys opposite Errol Flynn of all people. So I mean, it's always fun to play against type when you get a chance. The, the, and in, and in, in modern days, I mean, there's so many actors that you might uh, see in a movie. Uh, Alan Rickman comes to mind, the late great British star who was in the, the, the Die Hard first film of the Die Hard is the villain. He was so great at being somebody sinister and bad, and he was truly a suave heavy. And any heavy you choose to pick that, that played the villain in a Bond film, truly classic, memorable heavies. Gert Frobe in Goldfinger, and, and of course, uh, uh, um, Donald Pleasance was in a number of Goldfingers, too. I mean... Th these actors were... I mean, Telly Savalas was a, a Bond villain, uh, in one of the in one of the bonds, so I mean, I, I, I'm trying to think of some, some of the other actors. Uh, there was a German actor. Uh, I mentioned Gert Fro, but there was another. But there were so many of these really wonderfully suave actors who wanted to destroy the world. And of course, when you want to destroy <laughs> the world, you truly are a heavy. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, Manny? Thank God for all those actors, all those character actors, who enjoyed playing heavy. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, because it's, a, a good bad guy just makes the movie. Well, most actors would tell you, I'd rather play the bad guy. Mm. I want to be the villain. It's more fun. Let's, you yeah. know, there's more to do. You can yeah. chew the scenery more. I mean, you look at a funny <laughs> heavy. The, the funniest heavy I ever saw was Kevin Klein in A Fish Called Wanda. Mm. And he had a field day just being an yeah. absolute snake. And he yeah. wins an Oscar for his efforts. I mean, I, yeah. the, the, and I think that's one of the most masterful, hilarious heavies you're ever going to find. Yeah. So, yeah. What a great topic. I agree. Uh, it, it seems to me that uh, these days, there aren't as many character actors who, who have a full-time career. Everybody wants to be a leading man. Uh, and nobody gets maybe it was a year era when you got stuck in a role 
you were a character actor and you couldn't get out of it. I don't know. But it seems to me that there are fewer character actors these days. Yeah, but the ones that are around are really good. Paul Giamatti, uh, yeah. uh, J.K. Uh, Simmons. I mean, was yes. was there anybody more sinister and more evil in Whiplash than J.K. Simmons? Oh. And talk oh. about a heavy. I mean, that was just, yeah. that was just, it was. No, but I, I think many of the modern heavies are not really, they're bad guys, but they're not heavies like Robert Englund, who was masterful as Freddy Krueger. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, he was just an evil person. But well, he, but he wasn't necessarily a heavy. I mean, he was just pure evil. It wasn't like he was disguised as a human being, uh, right. as a nice <laughs> human being. Uh, or who played Hannibal Lecter? Oh, well, Anthony Hopkins, yeah. of course. Yeah. I mean, no, that, was that just one? I mean, he was, he so was delightfully, good. deliciously evil. I mean... <laughs> So I'm right there with you, Art. Yeah, I mean, they might not be the traditional heavy, but they are heavies nonetheless. And maybe they're the, we, we should call them and dub them the modern heavy. Mm. And, and they're there, and, and sometimes they're played by the main star. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I, think, I think that's okay, too. Yeah. Um, I, you know, there's always got to be somebody that uh, is going after, let's say, Liam Neeson's children or or, uh, <laughs> a, or maybe putting Sylvester Stallone in a compromising situation a, a, on a mountain or maybe or, in a sewer. Or trying to <laughs> destroy Gotham. Like oh, the and yeah. all, all the Marvel villains, of course. You know, any, anybody who's ever seen a Spider-Man or a Captain America, uh, absolutely. Well, Manny, so. you're our leading man. I don't think you could ever play the heavy. Okay. You may have tried once. And that's not that's not who you are, but it's wonderful that you knew who they were so you could revive them for us because most of the heavies don't make it to the end credits. Well, I feel a real kindred spirit to the the, the gentleman who played the evil uh, folks back in the day, and I want to part with this: he ain't heavy, he's my brother. Oh, very good. Okay. <laughs> now, now, on that nauseating phrase. <laughs> we we thank you once again and look forward to you uh, coming and joining us another time and tell us more about things that we've forgotten that we never knew that we knew in the first place. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. <laughs>